Hi, Josh here, and you're watching Tips from a Noob. Tips for noobs by noobs. Well, a noob. Anyway, my last tip from a noob was about threading on a handy lathe. So it only seems fitting that I show you how to thread on a mill or drill press using taps. It would actually be more fitting to show you how to set up a lathe to thread, but that's a can of worms I'm still working through. So there is a cheap way to tap on a drill press or some mills. I've only seen this on YouTube, but if you place a tap into your truck and tighten it just enough to hold a tap, you can then feed your tap into your work. When you're ready to stop, you stop the machine, throw it in reverse, and back your tap out. Placing the tap loosely in your chuck will act as a clutch. When you're about to over torque your tap, it will start to slip. But that just seems like you're asking for a broken tap. And my mill doesn't have a quick quill feed lever. I think that's what it's called. Anyway, there's a better, albeit pricier way to do this. It's a little thing called a tapping head. After drilling your holes, you simply insert a tapping head into your machine. Rest this bar on something solid and within reach. I am using two rods threaded together clamped to my tea table. Then insert the tap. You push the tap up until you can see it in the hole, then you tighten the collet nut. Now you set your clutch. To what? I don't know. I just guess light. There are marks, but they kind of stink. If it slips too much, you need to tighten it. If your tap breaks, well, then you need a new tap and you need to loosen the ring. But I never actually had that problem. To operate, slowly plunge the tap into your work. When a tap can't go any further, the clutch will start to slip. Then pull the tap back up. At first, this will simply disengage the tap from the machine, but then it will go in reverse and back the tap back out. The tapping head serves multiple purposes. First, it gives a little play to the tap, allowing you to be a little off on your hole. Second, it acts as a clutch, preventing you from over torquing your tap and snapping it in the hole. Third, it allows you to start, stop, and reverse the tap. When there is downward pressure, the tap will spin with the machine. When the pressure is slightly upward, the tap is disengaged. When you start pulling up more on the tap, the tap will run in reverse faster than your machine is spinning. Considering one broken tap can ruin your part, I consider this tool invaluable. Now I am using this tool on a mill, but it would also work great on a drill press. Another thing to note, I have replunged. I don't think that's a word. Anyway, I have replunged the tap without any problems. It didn't double thread or anything. If you look in the buy one, there are a few different brands. There's Tapmatic, then there's all the Tapmatic knockoffs. The one that I have is a Tapmatic knockoff from Shars. They're not a sponsor, they just had the cheapest one when I bought mine. At around $320, it's a lot cheaper than Tapmatic's $1137 price tag. Those are for equivalent models. Tapmatic does have a couple cheaper models, but they're still like twice as much as what I paid for. But you can also pick up a used Tapmatic on eBay for around $200. Now what I have is not the same quality as a Tapmatic, but for a home machinist or just someone who has a drill press and who needs to tap some holes, I think it's great. And I'll throw a link in the description to both Shars and Tapmatic's tapping heads. And if you want to see this tapping head in action, go watch my DIY tie rod video. Hi, Josh here, and you're watching 610 Bob's Builds. Today, I got a hot build for you. It's a powder coating oven. To powder coat my rims and axle, I need a fairly large oven. 